Welcome to the Deadly Addiction channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Transformers 1. So this is an animated movie. Um, right off the bat, I'll say I enjoyed it for the most part. Directed by Josh Cooley. It's got some knowable voice cast members. Uh, Chris Helmsworth as Optimus and Orion Pack, Scarlett Johansson. For the most part, I enjoyed it for what it was, and I think this might be just a Transformers for a new generation, and it doesn't gel well with, you know, what I grew up on, being born in 71, and Transformers were, like, amazing to me and fascinating, and I had almost all the toys. I still have an Optimus Prime, a deluxe version, like a big one that talks. Not the one that fucking assembles itself, which is insane. But I, I looked forward to this. I enjoyed it. There's some pacing issues. Um, but I think I didn't enjoy Megatron or D16 that much. And as the story progresses, this is where pacing comes in here and there and some decisions that I just not totally on board with. There's, there's something about these two friends who grew up as minors, let's say grew up, I know that they did children, but they're in a class system and that, that does feel genuine in all right, so first off, I'm not here to say what is real law, canon, and did they follow everything. What they did was pretty good. But you have this friendship that grows, and we know that D16 becomes Megatron, Orion Pax becomes Optimus Prime. And how are they going to get there? I think that's the only thing that are a little nitpicky for me. Um, I was a little surprised at Chris Helmsworth's voice, and wanting the original because it's so iconic it's epic was it peter cullen what a fucking voice actor but like i said if it's for a new generation of fans if new kids and teenagers and even adults might get into it this is fine it's good um but again the the story progresses as the two miners orion pax and d16 and this is where it kind of excited me and then kind of made me roll my eyes in a way. I'll quickly explain. So you find out that Orion Pax is looking for information on Cybertron's history. He feels like he's got a purpose, like there's something more to them than just being minors. Now, when I say like a class system... These are no cog, what I think they called in the show. Um, uh, they're not Autobots yet, right? So they have no cog, transformation cog, which lets them transform into vehicles or, you know, um, planes and shit like that. The One of the twists and spoilers is that that's not how it should be that all Transformers are born with a cog. And, but he doesn't know that right away. So he's looking for information. I found this interesting. If not the way he infiltrates and gets into this area to get some information, because he gets caught. He runs away, gets away, and... Maybe it's the, you know, the love I have for the character of Thor and how goofy they made him that kind of didn't sit well with me. If it's not Chris's fault to begin with, I don't know. But it depicts Orion Pax as a little too adventurous, a little too goofy in the sense that, yes, it's going to be his story, but if you're going to introduce a character like B, <clears throat> B whatever, 26, there's... There's your outlet for gung-ho, zaniness, uh, B-127, you know, where it doesn't feel like this is 
the Orion Pax that I would have imagined. So I would have kept his forays into breaching protocol to get information about the history, uh, finding out where the Matrix of Leadership is, because that's the quest of the Sentinel Prime, the leader of the auto, or the, the leader of the Transformers, who goes to the surface because no one's allowed on the surface and searches for the uh, matrix of leadership. So Energon will flow again because they have to mine for Energon. And when the matrix of leadership is given to the, a leader, to some extent, the Energon will flow. Well, that's the, you know, the legend and such. But I would have kept them more studious, serious, and had be, be the funny, gung-ho, take risks type person, even Megatron, you could have done that with, or D16, you could have done that with him a little more, because it doesn't feel right for me, and when the moments happen that are genuine, that feel good, that are, you know, building up to what is going to be a broken friendship and arch enemies, I didn't think Orion Pack should have been so much fun and gung-ho and risk-taking to that extent. There's a scene where he brings D-16 to see the race. Um, Sentinel Prime, a charismatic leader, comes down and announces a race. Uh, he didn't find a matrix of leadership. <clears throat> and um, Orion Pax brings him to this great viewing place. He feels like he's in it and he says, oh, you did it for me? And, you know, they bump fists like, you know, always got each other's back. But then, you know, okay, so they they might have foreshadowed it earlier, but Orion Pax is like, imagine we were in the race. Even if we came in next, all we have to do is beat one Transformer who can transform. So while they're watching this, Orion Pax gets them and both involved and they run the race. And again, I know it's for a new generation, it's gotta be fun, but with what already what I perceive for me, slightly pacing issues, things just gotta, you know, just started annoying me in a, in a, in a personal way, like not in a way where I think viewers are gonna like run away in droves because this Optimus isn't, you know, this Orion Pax isn't what they imagined, but I get the um, pretty good voice acting from Scarlett Johansson, Alita One, where she's telling Optimus that she's better than him in every way but one. And she goes on to like list his attributes that, you know, inspire and his optimism. And they should have focused on that, but not the growth of hey i'm a funny fun risk-taking thrill seeker and i'm also searching for information from the, you know the history of cybertron it's, for me that's really one of the major nitpicks and then the let's say splitting of the friendship now again I enjoyed the movie. I had fun. There's pretty good shots and interesting ways that they use their transformation to beat enemies, which I found interesting. But I also found some dumb, stupid shit that, again, doesn't amount to more than nitpicks. But for me, it's like distancing me from what I want Transformers to be and remember it. Again, trying to be honest and say that this might be great for a new generation. It might be, you know, it's nearly like a two hour animated movie, which kind of holds true to at least telling the story of um, Primus, who created Cybertron, who sacrificed himself to give the planet its whatever, its energy, its form, and... He creates the primes. And there's a certain amount of them. I'm not sure if that's exact. But on their mission, he, with, when he finds B, 
he finds a distress call where the primes were killed in battle and figures, oh, if that's where they were killed, that's where the Matrix is going to be. So he goes on a quest and um, D16 goes with him. You know, and again, there's some good banter between them. There's a a feeling they were friends in that sense. And when they meet B and they go through the thing, he goes on the adventure and then inadvertently, because Orion Pax fucked over Alita One technically, she got demoted and she gets wrapped up in this is on the adventure also. And they find the surface of Cybertron again uh there are moments where you can see and maybe that was the goal to show him as a fun gung-ho you know idealist type thing and there are moments where they are showing his growth his maturity or you know so i'm going to give some credit there um and i guess alita one is that catalyst for that and then his observation of d16 because eventually they do find um, where the primes were killed. And one thing to note is they find a, uh, they have to dodge or fucking avoid a Quintesson ship who, according to their law, 50 cycles ago, whatever, there was a war. And Cybertron eventually won their freedom, but the primes died except for Sentinel Prime. And... Um, so they're surprised that the Quintessons are here. They're like scanning for life signs, it seems. But they get away. They find the uh, dead um, primes. And this is like a thing that made me, you know, kind of shake my head or wonder. When they get there, they find all the primes dead. But apparently some still have their transformation cogs. And Alpha Trion is just powered down. So I'm like, well, wouldn't all their cogs be taken out? Wouldn't they have made sure Alpha Trion was dead, dead? Anyway, you get him revived. He gives the information. And spoilers, it's revealed that Sentinel Prime betrayed all the Primes to be basically king of Cybertron. And he still bows down to the Quintessons and has a deal with them for Energon. Which is why he's making the minors. And I thought this was done pretty well. Again, there's good voice acting all around. Um, and I'll give it credit for that. That he you know, he plays this boisterous, uh, charismatic leader. And you find out he's just a, you know, a traitor and a, and a really shitty fucking <laughs> transformer. Um, there's doubt amongst the you know new heroes of this age and this is where you start seeing d16 uh change and become more angry and bitter about his life and what was going on you know every day they lived a lie you find out that spoilers again that sentinel prime takes all the cogs out before these transformers are born let's say or birth so there's a whole class system of robots or transformers that can't transform into vehicles and they're just miners and workers and laborers and the ones that could transform are you know elevated looked up to idolized and there was a one little beat where even though the orion packs and d16 lost the race Sentinel Prime does visit them and tells them about um, how inspiring they were. You know, can they talk to the miners to, you know, increase production? Because they, they, the exploits already did it. And he promises them to send them to his personal, you know, medical bay or whatever the fuck. Uh, and then it seems genuine and then when Darkwing I think it is throws them into like the 50th level of fucking Cybertron where you know basically no one comes back from 
it, they say no we're supposed to be with the Ryan Pex and it so there is good beats in it where you're like oh Sons on the Prime's not gonna let that happen is he gonna wonder but no he's a fucking traitor and doesn't give a fuck he was just gonna use them to make production uh, go even higher because he needs to appease the quintessence who come I guess for a tie he's a, and he's gonna do all bow and his old video camera stuff um so Alpha Trion's giving them the info, telling them what a traitor he is, even shows them proof. Um gives them a device that has all the proof on it. And here's where um for me, you know, I get it. I'd rather it go be, you know, more like the original or whatever, but Alpha Trion gives the Autobot, um, the Transformers here, transformation cards. And they go into this, uh, he names who they are, and it's not D16's, um, hero, Megatronus, but, um, they're able to, they get re, because there is a, a height difference and a build difference between, like, non-cog uh, tr uh, transformers and he all seems shorter and you know less bulky and more just workers and when they get their cogs they get bigger and you know, you know different designs let's say keeping more to what you would be on cybertron which is fine and i liked not that he transforms into a truck from earth but it's close and it has that feel of the original cartoon where you see them on cybertron so, again, uh, you know, a little bit of pacing issues. Um, here's where the D16 starts to bother me a little bit, him progressing into Megatron. But it's a balance of me enjoying Orion Pax's growth and, you know, what he'll become. But I don't think it was done amazingly well. It, it's serviceable, maybe. Um... But they agree to go back, show the proof that they have. Uh, they get attacked. Alpha Trion sacrifices himself, tells them to get out. They're the, they're the future. Um, oh, but the Matrix of Leadership was not there. When they look at the um, Transformer who had it, it's empty and it's gone. But Alpha Trion does show that when Sentinel Prime took the Matrix, it disintegrated because you have to be chosen. But all they have is the proof. It's like a little watch thing, a data cube thing. And they're going to go back to Alpha Trion, the major city, and expose Sentinel Prime. You know, it works for the most part. We get a couple of things here and there. Like I said, this is, this is around the area where you start to see a leader one, you know, telling us you know what we know in the future that you know these qualities that uh our Pax has are um a special and he could use that and they they use it into the um story as it progresses you know act one two three and here you're getting them go back and devise a plan because they're so outnumbered they're so um kind of screwed when you think about it but they meet the high god who were betrayed by sentinel prime and it's led by starscream this was a little confusing of what was going on here and d16's uh progressing dead you know drive and anger um gets him into a fight with Starscream, but it doesn't seem like it's it's earned in the way it progresses. You know, I'll give too much away here and there, but it didn't feel like it was earned in the way you would envision it to be. But they agree that they're going to go back with the High God and Orion Pax is going to get another army, which is obviously going to be the no cogs, the miners, and the workers. And I kind of like how that fits in, if it's exact or not, with the 
original premise of the Transformers. And they go to the city. Orion sneaks back into the mines. He gives a speech. And again, not amazing, but at least it, was, it you know, showed and told us, you know, because he's doing the speech and he's getting everybody, you know, on his side. And they have to do this at the same time, Alita One with the High God. And it's fun, it was fun to see Shockwave and Soundwave. Nothing feels too overboard in that area. And, you know, you, you see people, like mentioned, he mentions Jazz, Ryan Pax, but they keep him to the main characters for the most part. But when they go back in, you start seeing really uh, the height of the action and it done pretty good. Again, I, I was impressed at some of the transformation attacks that it had, but in some other ones, I was a little disappointed. Like, it seems maybe not practical or silly. But again, you know, the original Transformers, parts of it were fucking ridiculous. But I, so I get it. Uh, the movie, the Transformers movie, was like, to me, such a memorable piece of magic. And this doesn't capture that, but for what it's worth, again, is it a new, is it good for the new generation? I think so, in the long run. And then they get back, and Ryan does his speech, and Alita One's getting overwhelmed, and all the non-cogs enter the fray but they do so with like jetpacks so i'm also confused in that area if you got you know you're doing the autobots who are ground based for the most part vehicles and the decepticons ultimately all the flyers for the most part to show them have this sky battle i thought it was dumb especially optimus boosting around I think you could have done more, you know, serious moments of, I don't know, suspense or a threat level. It didn't feel like any of this really mattered in that way. So in the original Transformers movie, there's one scene where Optimus has had enough and he knows he's got to put a stop to you know them destroying the megatron of uh, the city that they're in and he goes into battle and he boosts up he transforms in mid boost he's in the air and his little boost has given him that rocket and he fires his rifle gun and takes some out he lands it is so epic and it's you feel the weight behind like what's at stake i didn't feel that here this felt more Granted, if it's a different way, better. A more fun, you know, look at it. Again, there's no tension in what I thought could have been. Yes, it could be that you know where these characters go. But it's also the side characters. You know, you don't know if B's going to get his throat ripped out or Alita One dies. You know, and they had done a Netflix series that I did a review on, which I thought you know kind of missed the mark for the most part on certain things but you know it had its own uh value um i'm not sure if this is what i would have went with and you know not that you have to continue from one thing or match it up but i think it would be you know a little more high level stakes a little more serious uh now it can be what it eventually becomes but okay, they get in, they confront Sentinel Prime, their device is broken though, so they have no proof, uh, no evidence. And he captures in that, when they ran from uh, Sentinel Prime, the first, uh, originally, whatever the fuck, they did capture B and D-16. And here again, which is fine, I liked it, he has shown D-16 not bowing, they stands up and gets you know basically bitch slapped around they fucking find they see the sticker on him from megatronus that optimus gave him or orion gave him 
and D16 is like permanently scarred. You know, because if you burn into that metal, it's like it hurts them. Yeah. Anyway, but he still won't kneel and stand down, so he keep, keeps, you know, he's getting a beaten. And um, there's there's a turn coming here, and as they're fighting, Optimus is on the train. You know, they burst through. They get involved, and he says, "No, we need." arachnid because when he fought arachnid she did this cool move and opened up her head or whatever it was like fucking 12 eyes in there and she says i see everything so he orion realizes a pretty cool plan that he's got to get her memory core because everything sentinel's done has been recorded by her fine i thought it was pretty cool how they go about it and the shenanigans that get there you know it's all right Again, I have a more of an envision of what's going on, and you know, I'm waiting for Optimus to pick up his fucking famous rifle gun anywhere in the fucking show. Um, but getting to this, uh, fights are happening all over, different divisions doing what they can, even the non cogs are there, and eventually it's going to come down to. Optimus and Alita, uh, Orion and Alita have to get Arachnid into the broadcasting station. Pretty fun scene, I guess. And, um, see, I enjoyed it because Alita 1 doesn't have the permanency in my mind of Peter Cullen and, you know, what Optimus Prime represents eventually. So, you know, she's battling and corpse here and there. And I enjoyed it, have fun. They eventually get her, but at the same time, because of the crash into the thing, um, I think a shockwave or somebody unleashes the prisoners, and D4, or D16, what the fuck his name is, and um, Sentinel Prime go at it, because remember, uh, D16 is fucking pissed. They, they tried to show his progression into this... Um, will become the villain but again it doesn't work for me whether it was my slight you know disappointment in his voice acting uh, you know as someone who's doing um such an iconic fucking villain i mean come on you, you i get it in the beginning because i was a little surprised with chris Hemsworth, but you know i'm thinking like okay orion Pax, and this is d16 so what's the um have fun with it so but when they transform you want them to be you know i would rather them to be the fucking real voices and you know get more get closer now they give them credit they do um i'll get to that spoiler eventually but or closer to it but as the fight progresses because remember the, the, they've got the cogs now so Orion Pax, D16, B120 fucking 7, Alita 1. Oh, oh, and there's a goofy fucking scene where they don't know their powers yet because they, they don't know they can trans they don't know what they could transform into and they have to run away. But that was kind of dumb. But again, this could be just me. You know, that I would okay. So in Beast Machines. <laughs> I love the Beast Wars. It was so fucking epic and awesome the way they did that story. But when it finishes in Beast Machines, um, that version of Optimus Prime, Primal, you know, finds that Zen moment and he transforms and it gives each one a personality. In their transformation, that it might be difficult for some, but for Rat Trap, he can't transform, and it's done great because Rat Trap's that character in that show. Wise cracking, whatever. Here, they all go through zany half transformations and stuff, and I just thought it was too much. Like, uh, okay, you know what? B B one twenty seven is the closest to like, just because he's so excited about everything. He um. He gets uh, the closest to. He's like he goes transform and he almost he gets no wheels, but he's a car. Now there was a cool moment I laughed when when the prisoners are there. He's got a muzzle on. He can't talk. <laughs> and 
they're like, why well, got the muzzle on and whatever? Because he won't stop talking. And someone says, even unconscious? He's like, even worse when he was unconscious. Because when they do their cutscenes and scene transitions in, in, at certain parts, B is always talking. <laughs> he's, he's talking about something, making a story up. And again, I might find it dumb and I'm not too excited because he's got laser knife hands. But for what they did with it, fine. Again, not my Transformers, but serviceable and fun. Sure, I can see kids loving this. And that's its goal. So it's not just, please, fucking, you know, old school, original fucking Transformers, you know, love. And again, I might have said this on one of my podcasts, but I was adamant of not wanting to like or watch Beast Wars. And it came on every fucking week. And lo and behold, I caught a fucking episode or two. And man, Beast Wars is fucking amazing. Uh, pound for pound better than the Transformers original, but not as iconic and, you know, whatever. And their transition to breaching the time travel type aspect and the original law and bringing in the original things is just fucking amazing. And the last season or two is Beast Machines, all fucking connected. Writing was superb on that fucking show. Here it's not so much, but... Again, D16 is getting really fucking driven. He's, you know, going whatever. And Orion Pax doesn't, you know, it's like done okay where it's on the periphery, like where when the high god, you know, praises Megatron because he beat Starscream. I guess that's his rite of passage. You know, you can see the looks from Orion Pax, and then he's leading the team. He'll guide them. You know, done pretty well. And here you got him just trying his best. He's getting beaten here and there. Um, you know, but he found out he can transform his arm into that cannon. Um, so he's trying to defeat Sentinel Prime, Op, uh, Orion Pax, and then... Let's say Alita One, uh, successful and getting Arachnid and her memory leak. So all of Cybertron, let's say all of, I don't know, let's say they're just the city, I guess, Icon, and they're all um, given a, you know, view screens and news stations, if you want to call it, are broadcasting all of Sentinel Prime's shitty nonsense. So he's exposed. And. When Sentinel Prime sees this, it gives D-16 the opening, starts getting the upper hand, and goes to kill him. Orion Pack stops him. Now, here's where I didn't really buy much of this, but Orion Pack says, no, you can't start a new era of the Transformers or Cybertronians with a execution. This sets him off, D-16 off, and this is the part that's, to me, just, it just doesn't hold up well, again, maybe for a new generation, but as the fight ensues, <clears throat> there's a moment where he's got his arm can, he bl goes to blow Sentinel apart, and Orion Pax jumps in front, gets his arm blown off and a hole in his chest, and as he's falling, D-16 grabs his hand, and you can see he's confused. He's like, why did you do that? And I was, on, I was on board, and I was like, oh, this is cool. And I remember, you know, I watched it recently. I remember just feeling that, oh, okay, we, we have to make this real deep. And they, in my opinion, they didn't. He, his eyes are red, and he, he says... I'm not going to keep saving you. <laughs> and he drops him. And so, like, as a writer or whatever, if your goal is to get D16 to Megatron and Orion Pax to Optimus, how is that going to happen? And, you know, in my mind, I knew it had to be the Matrix of Leadership and some sort of betrayal. And the way they sought to get there didn't work for me. So... 
I don't buy the he lets him go. I thought it was going to be these looks, these subtleties, this growing thing, this clash for leadership would have been really drawn out and just the beginning was starting at the end of the movie. But you can do another movie with it growing and growing and growing. But no, they decide, boom. Fuck you, Orion Pax. You can die. I'm going to kill Sentinel Prime. And he, as this is happening, you know, they're doing some cool things with B. He's got the laser blades. There's some comedy. The little one, probably to stand out in that thing. Wait, I think she's right. She's like, I'm better than you in every way. So Ryan Pax, and she goes, but one. And that one happens to be more than one thing. But in the sense of his optimism and his hope. So Ryan Pax is falling. He's falling to his desk. He keeps falling, falling, but the planet starts opening up in chambers. And at the same time, D-16 is brutally murdering Sentinel Prime, ripping him in half. And then he takes... Oh, because it was revealed that Sentinel Prime took Megatronus's transformation cog. And Megatron takes it and puts it in his own, gives him a slightly upgraded frame and structure. And I think his cannon goes from an original old one cannon thing to a three thing, which is fine. Making him a tank, that type of thing was done earlier. And I'm fine with it. It doesn't make sense he's a fucking gun. All right? A gun that fits into the hand. <laughs> Even if you want to go with, okay, Transformers can make things smaller. It was fucking awesome as a fucking transformer to have like a little laser gun you can play with and he transforms into a robot but it makes no fucking sense that he's this you know 14 foot tall robot galvatron name they did a better job with in, in that era where he becomes a fucking cannon stand like a you know huge thing but in the original he jump and he transformed and star screen could hold him like a gun a pistol but okay, you know, you let that go as a kid, but you, you would say that's stupid now, I'm fine with it. But he's getting ready to destroy them, and Op uh, Orion Pax gets sucked into the falls, gets sucked into the center of the planet, and the spirits are the essence of Primus and the Primes deem him worthy for his sacrifice, and the matrix of leadership is given to him, brings him... From Orion Pax to Optimus, just as the transformation called Megatronus makes D16 Megatron. As he says, I am Megatron. Okay. And then a fucking Optimus, like Dragon Ball Z's through the fucking planet, he gets up and then there's a fight. And I'm like, you know, you didn't have to really do this. And again, you didn't have fucking Optimus with his fucking rifle. You're pissing me off. I'm getting aggravated, frustrated. But you did the fucking laser axe, the Energon axe and stuff, which I thought was pretty cool, but it didn't work for me. The battle itself was okay. But again, my brain was like, no, this, you shouldn't have done this. It shouldn't have happened right now. Maybe a little thing here and there, you know, but it's settled pretty easy. And then there's this growing division between, you know, what will become Autobots and Decepticons. And it didn't work for me. Um, Optimus Prime wins in the end. Um, pretty crazy move with the axe. Um, <clears throat> he blocks one of his Megatron's laser blast with his arm and then as he swings to the other arm with the cannon he slices it in half he beats him and then he's like go you're exiled from the city take the high god with you it just felt so forced so unnatural for what i thought they were gonna do even with my little nitpicks like i enjoyed this it's fun it's got some neat um shots here and there the music maybe a little bit blander than I remember, but it works and services everything. For a new generation, I thought pretty well, and I was happy with it. But for me, when you show the 
D16 into Megatron and I'm I'm tired of saving you. It doesn't work for me. Then you have this big all out battle and Megatron leaves with the high god or Optimus is, you know, defunct old leader. And you got, you know, um, oh, the cool moment, but it could have been done better where um, Optimus Prime's Matrix of Leadership starts glowing. He pulls it out, grabs it. Why did you didn't use the fucking original song? You're out of your fucking minds. Or if it was done, I think they did other things like lower lower level, not so much in your face, but they were trying to match, you know, that feeling of the old show and the movie maybe. But you didn't hear blaring you got to touch, which was fucking a crime. But he holds it. He doesn't open it, but he holds it, and Energon starts flowing. He's the leader of the Transformers, the Autobots now. And they do a scene where, you know, everything's flowing, people are cheering. He gives all the non-cogs their cogs back. Cool moment, deserved in that sense. And then they show, like, a cut scene after scene. Fucking Megatron's, like, deceived. That we've been deceived, and now we're Decepticons. Like, that forced type thing didn't work for me. Him being the Megatron was supposed to know and remember, I don't think it was earned. I think it was really, you know, you... you you, you let it out too fast. I was enjoying the subtle change in his personality, the looks, the drive, the anger. But the moment he stops one arm dying Optimus from falling, should have been the beginning of this rift that really grows in like the next movie and culminates in the third movie. But no, he just lets him go and he says, I'm tired of saving you. And I didn't buy it and it just kind of ruined what this Megatron will ultimately become for me. In a sense, you know, of course, any continuations from this could be amazing and it's not going to really ruin it. But it ruined the moment for me and ruined what I thought would have been a better ending. Yeah, you could have had them fight still. But you could have actually found the Matrix in the sense where once it's... You find out the Matrix was disintegrated, and um, it's just reintegrated in the center of the planet. I thought that was dumb. You know, it should have been something he grabbed and like couldn't put in his chest. He wasn't worthy at that moment. You know, until he sacrifices himself, and then it activates or something. It just felt like this. You know, they call things MacGuffins and red herrings. So it was a huge letdown. But, again, it was a cool moment. He pulls it out of his chest and water, uh, water. Energon flows and Cybertron is healed in that sense. He cut away Decepticons, Megatron, uh, who's got the real deal emblem now of Megatron. Is. And, like, that's the sum of it. My feelings on this are a little bit mixed, but I generally enjoyed it. I'm not, um, you know, Get to diss on it too much. A little bit disappointing. More of a letdown because of what I was enjoying so much. Um, cool things here and there. The whole picture. A little bit of pacing issues for me. And those pacing issues might get a little bit uh, amplified by decisions I didn't like. But I think I would recommend this totally to a new generation of kids and um young men adults women i think you've got enough here that could excite the imagination so it did its job in that way for the most part yes i would have liked things done a little bit differently and this should have been a you know a trilogy in a sense where megatron declares himself megatron Optimus, and he defers the leadership but it builds in the background and the second movie could have been them at odds, uh, but the same goal, and that's where the line is drawn. This scene, like you rushed everything at the end to get this arch villain type thing, and yes, 
when the end speech comes, you can tell Chris Helmsworth is voice is upgraded in a sense where he's either trying to do it Optimus Prime and you know the same thing happened with Megatron so they did try at the end to make that progression seem like a maturity age you know going from Orion Pax to Optimus and D16 to Megatron does make them sound more like the Autobots and Decepticons we knew you know, Starscream was a little jarring, but it got it grew on me. Um, okay, so there you go. Transformers 1, I recommend it. Definitely for kids and whatever. If you're a stickler for the real history and stuff, this might be close because, you know, they do the primes. And there's so many iterations of comic books. It's, I once did a deep dive and it was ridiculous. But I think it's serviceable in what it's saying. Um, there was a golden age. The Primes ruled. Quintessence came. It was a war. They all died, except for one in this version, basically. And, well, Alpha Trion, so, okay, two. And there's no mention of the Oracle, which I thought was, uh, you know, uh, they could have done a couple of things with that, connecting it to Beast Wars. And not that Beast Wars owns it, but you know what I mean, if you know the law. So, Sticklers for the original might find this a little off-putting here and there, but I think you got to give it credit for what it tried to do. You know, a two-hour, basically, animated movie. The origin of Megatron and Orion, their friendship, their, you know, eventual breakup. But I just wish they would have held back the the monumental split and made the division clear here. But that was going to continue. So there's my thoughts. Hope everybody's doing well. My best to you and yours. Take care.